Hi guys, welcome to Outcan ADV. Today we got something a little different for you. It's kind of a product review, but uh, not a bike part. This time I'm reviewing a gun. Anyway, uh, we'll get into all of that right after this. So the story goes like this. Uh, I turned 21 back in October and I really wanted to get myself a small carry piece. Um, I had a few criteria. It had to be really inexpensive. I'm not buying a Glock. I like Glocks, don't get me wrong, but they're too expensive and uh, I had other things to do with my money. So it had to be really inexpensive. It had to be fairly reliable, uh, small, and fairly well suited to a lefty because I am a southpaw. So with all these criteria, uh, I came up with the Taurus G2C. It's a small, fairly inexpensive, um, you know, standard polymer frame subcompact pistol. Uh, chambered in 9mm, they also uh, offer a 40 Smith & Wesson. It's a nice concealed pistol. I've put off doing a review of it for this long because I wanted to kind of get to know it, put a few hundred rounds through it, um, and while I'm, I'm no expert on, on guns and pistols especially, uh, I have about 300, 350 rounds through this thing and uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. So. Uh, Without further ado, let's get into it. So I've got it in a nice little holster and, and I'll go into that later, but uh, anyway. This is good and that's what it looks like. So if I was going to go sub $300 on a, on a subcompact, um, you don't have a whole lot of options. You've got this one. I picked this up for about $220. Um, they can be had cheaper online, especially if you have an FFL and you don't have to go and pay for uh, a, a transfer fee. Uh, the biggest contender or the biggest other gun that I was looking at was the Sky, uh, I don't even know the designation of it, but it's a little 9. Um, fairly similar to this, polymer, striker fired, 9mm pistol. and. Uh, they run about the same, they're about $200. And the biggest thing for me was this thing just felt better to me. Uh, it's got a few more features, not a lot, but the sky is really boxy and uh, it didn't feel as good in my hand. So that's why I picked this one up. So going over a few features on this thing. Uh, as far as how it operates, it's basically a Glock with a safety. Um, so that said, it has a thumb safety. Uh, on the left hand side, which is good for righties, it's not ambidextrous, which is kind of a bummer for me, but whatever. Um, so as far as controls, you got the safety, you got a uh, fairly substantial mag release. I haven't had any problems uh, finding it. It sticks out far enough to where you can, you can pretty much find it wherever. Um, and then a slide lock, and that's about it. It uh, comes apart just like, a, just like a Glock, has the little pin here that you you know, do that and, uh, you know, you got your basic barrel, there you go. And uh, so it's, it's not, uh, not all that complicated, it's just a cheap Glock. Now the other thing this thing does have um, that I like is it's got a fully adjustable set of sights. Um, so the front is a standard post with a little white dot, and the rear has two white dots, but it's adjustable for elevation and windage. Um, only thing I didn't really cotton to on this one was that uh, it seems to slip just slightly. Um, I'm not sure, but that's just something I've, I've kind of noticed and, and been uh, scared of, if nothing else. I don't know. It also has a loaded chamber indicator, so uh, if there's a round in there, this thing here will pop up and there's a little red dot on it to tell you. And it's also a tactile um, safety, if you will, as well. So you don't have to look at it, you can feel it. Well, that's about it as far as features go. Uh, it's got your normal, you know, trigger safety. And the trigger on this thing is not, uh, golly, how do I say it? It's not the greatest, but it's sure not the worst trigger I've felt. Um, it's got a little, it's kind of glitchy, if you will, with the trigger safety. It seems like the safety spring is too tight or too stiff, so uh, sometimes the safety will kind of hang up and then you go through that and then it's a nice smooth trigger pull. And so if you, uh, if you see it, it uh, goes through here, has a nice stop and a clean break. And then the reset is 
right there. So it's really not, uh, it's not too shabby at all. Only thing I might um, worry about just a little bit is the uh, trigger safety spring. It seems to be too strong. But other than that, it's a, it's a fairly nice trigger. So as far as running this thing, uh, like I said, I've got about 350 rounds through it, and uh, so far it's holding up well. Now I have had a few stoppages, um, failures to feed, failures to eject, uh, and I think most of them are issues to do with the magazine. Now I got a couple of magazines for this. It comes with two mags, and the mags have a little uh, grip thing there, so if you put them in, you got a little more grip. There's a little pinky grip there. And uh, one of them is good. The other one I have questions about. And then I got a couple of extra mags for it, which uh, online everybody says, well, hey, this is great, but the mags are expensive. And uh, the SIG P226 mags fit in this thing just great. And so I got a couple of P226 mags. They fit, they feed, they cycle. Um, but I've been having some problems with them and I think it's those mags. So don't discount the mags, I think it's just me. So when I got this thing, I got a little hip bolster, a um, little Kydex, I'm a lefty, so it's obviously this side, but a uh, little Kydex flat outside the waistband, kind of pancake holster, and I, it worked really well. I got it from Amazon, it's about $30, $35 maybe, um, and I'm happy with it, and I'm gonna continue carrying it that way if I'm you know, out in the woods or, or doing something that I want. I don't want concealment for it. So at the time I got the gun, I did the transfer through a little place here in town called Dynamic Defense Solutions, and uh, they're an FFL, so that's that's how that happened. But uh, also, they their real business is they make Kydex holsters. And so uh, at the time I ordered it, and uh, I was planning on getting one of their holsters as well. So they gave me a discount on the holster, uh, and that's what this is. This is a appendix holster. So uh, you've got. I'll show you guys here. So you got the gun goes in here, and an extra mag goes in here. Put that in, the mag goes in like that, and uh, it all sits right like that. So far, I'm really happy with this thing. Now, there's a lot of adjustment you can do on an appendix uh, holster. You can first off, you can take these two and bend them, so the uh, the angle of this is different. So you got a tighter squeeze or a flatter kind of holster. Um, this is how they did. They said, well, we'll do it like we normally do it, and if you want it different, we can change it, uh, and, and this is just fine. Now, some appendix holsters actually have a, like a hinge-ish type of thing here that you can actually bend it, and it kind of forms to you, but whatever. Uh, other than that, it's a pretty standard, basic uh, appendix holster. Now, uh, you've got, back here, you've got a big old, uh, like a wedge thing, and the idea with that is to push the rest of the top of the gun in towards you a little bit. And uh, here you have a claw that kind of sticks out and hooks the, the inside of your pants. And uh, with the same idea, to try to tuck the gun in to your belly a little bit more. As far as the holster goes, you've got a few options on how tight you can fit it. There's, uh, there's screws all over here. And you can also move these loops up and down if you want the holster higher or lower. Uh, Actually, no, this is the highest setting, or the standard setting, and, and you can go a little lower, which doesn't work for me, but it might work for a different gun. Anyway, they have uh, a lot of different colors, and there's all kinds of different holsters they make. It's not just appendix. They make outside, inside the waistband, uh, the drop leg holsters with all the, the different, it's not molly, but there's a quick detach system that you can, you know, mess around with. Anyway, mag pouches, AR mag pouches. Anyway, so uh, if you're ever in Alaska and you need a holster or something, uh, look them up. They, they, uh, they did right by me and, and I'll recommend them to anybody. So again, gun goes in here and mag goes in here. And this brings up questions to some people about uh, safety. You know, you are pointing a gun in a, in a very tender spot after all. And uh, there, is a, there is a specific <laughs> protocol to this and uh, it's, it's a delicate process. But once you got it down, once you got a real solid routine going, um, it's like anything else. Don't point a gun where you don't want a bullet to go, and uh, that's that. So those are my thoughts on the Taurus G2C and 9mm. Now, of course, there's still a 40 s &W version that I haven't tried, but whatever. I assume it's fairly similar. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with this. For the price, you can't beat it. And uh, 
honestly, it would definitely compete with uh, guns that are up there twice the price. So uh, I'm happy with it and definitely give it a try or at least a look into if you're uh, in the market for a real inexpensive uh, subcompact or, or carry uh, concealed weapon. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, be sure to leave a comment down there. I, I love hearing from you guys. I try to respond, you know, as quick as I can. That's the Taurus G2C. That's what I think about it. That's my holster. And uh, I also have the other one, which I went into. So I'm going to leave you guys there. You guys be safe out there. We'll see you next week.